Hello, I'm Javier Hernandez reporting from Washington. At a House subcommittee hearing, two federal judges discussed the impact of mandatory minimum sentences. The 1984 Sentencing Reform Act provided the U.S. with the first uniform guidelines on sentencing for all offenses. But over the years, Congress has also added mandatory minimum sentence requirements for a select group of crimes. Some in Congress believe this creates unintended consequences. Once the prosecutor makes the, uh, makes the call as to who or as to what to charge with, then you're locking the, the judges in to what they can sentence uh, the individual for, not the facts of the case, but the charge that he was convicted of. So uh, what we've done is shifted discretion away from the judges to exercise discretion and hoisted it upon the prosecution. The judicial conference agrees. When you transfer the discretion into the arms of the prosecutor, they're a, a biased party in the sense that they're representing one side. They're representing the, the prosecution. Our job as judges is try to, to balance the competing concerns. And I think from an institutional perspective, we're better able to exercise discretion, better able to make the individualized judgments that are required in sentencing decisions than is uh, one, of the, uh, one of the parties in the case. And there is a secondary concern with mandatory minimums. When federal judges are forced to follow mandatory minimum sentencing schemes, truly bizarre sentences result which can seriously undermine public confidence in the system. Cassell recalled being required to sentence a first-time offender to 660 months for armed drug dealing. He compared that to the sentence for an aircraft hijacker, a terrorist who detonates a bomb in a public place, and a second-degree murderer. The U.S. Sentencing Commission feels mandatory minimums are unnecessary. The Commission firmly believes that the sentencing guideline system remains the best mechanism for assuring that the statutory purposes of sentencing as set forth in 18 U.S.C. Section 3553A are met. But Department of Justice officials feel that mandatory minimums are a useful tool during investigations. It allows us to, to get cooperation from uh, folks at a lower level to work up the, the food chain, so to speak. And it also allows us to take these people out of the community that are, are violent. And some legislators believe the mandatory minimums ensure tough sentences. You talk about the message to criminals um, that they get. Um, it's also a message if we say to criminals, if you do the crime, you're going to do the time. But mandatory minimums put judges in a difficult position. But you've created two voices. You, you want us to listen to the Sentencing Commission, and in my, that case, they told me nine years. And obviously, you want me to listen to the mandatory minimum sentencing scheme. It's hard for us to, to follow uh, two masters. Cassell testified that the right judicial thing. conference continues to oppose mandatory minimums, a position it's held for more than 50 years. Last year, offenders in over 20,000 cases were convicted of violating a statute that carried a mandatory minimum penalty. Reporting from Washington, I'm Javier Hernandez.